Hey guys, it's me, Meteor, and welcome to another edition of What is Metroid Canon? Today we're talking about Super Metroid. At first glance, this game may just seem like a retread of the first game. Samus goes to Zebes to destroy Mother Brain and the Metroids. While that may be true, the factors leading to this moment are a bit different. After Samus spared the baby Metroid on SR388, she delivered it to a research station at Ceres for testing, which ended up getting attacked almost as quickly as she left, forcing her to head back. The culprit behind the attack? Ridley. To really stress the importance of this encounter, let's backtrack a bit. After his original defeat in Zero Mission, the pirates resurrected him on the space frigate Orpheon using cybernetic attachments, which they could have had experience using with Mecha Ridley. This of course led into a whole different side story of games, all of which take place before Metroid 2. For this reason, when Samus visited SR388, when it came to eliminating Metroids, it was literally her final stop. All other sources of Metroids have already been eliminated. Ridley, leader of the Space Pirates, obviously wouldn't take too kindly to this, which is why he met up with Samus on the planet to try and stop her. Considering she already defeated the Queen upon his arrival, that larva, that baby, was their only hope for success. This would lead to possibly the most important battle Samus would ever have against Ridley. Even though Ridley would eventually be defeated with a little help from the baby, he still didn't stay down. Though, at this point, all his cybernetic attachments were officially gone. Now that Ridley knew Samus spared the baby, rather than try to fight for it, all he had to do was wait for the perfect moment. And he did, right when Samus left the research facility. Even though Samus did catch up with him, it didn't matter, he already had what he wanted, and fled. Therefore, when Samus went back to Zebes, it wasn't just because Mother Brain went rogue, but rather, her sympathy for the baby put the entire galaxy in jeopardy once again, and she wanted to stop it before it could begin. Of course, as Samus would soon discover, the survivors of the initial attack on Zebes were hard at work rebuilding it ever since. Coincidentally, the only section still damaged was the site Mother Brain was initially destroyed. New places were even constructed, such as the underwater Meridia. Interestingly, this place is also the home of Machtroids, the space pirates' first failed attempts at cloning Metroids. Some theorize that since you only face these Meridia, perhaps the pirates were trying to create an aquatic variation of Metroid that could freely move through water. Whatever the case, considering how weak they are, clearly they weren't successful. They were successful, however, in creating more Metroids from the stolen baby. But how? The queen was destroyed. There wouldn't be any way for them to reproduce, right? Well, as stated in several sources, such as the Zero Mission Instruction Manual, it was possible to replicate these Metroids after heavy exposure to beta rays. It's quite likely the same method was used in Super Metroid. Another question remains though. Why is it that we never saw any other Metroid forms outside of its larval state in Zebes this time or last time? Well, as it turns out, they're only able to molt naturally into Alpha in later stages within the conditions of SR388. In the conditions of Zebes, absorbing more energy would only cause them to increase in size. All of this, of course, was taking place as Samus was infiltrating Zebes again. When Samus does eventually find and defeat Ridley, it doesn't matter, the Metroid is gone, and the damage is already done. That doesn't stop Samus from defeating them anyway, though. Well, except for one. One giant behemoth Metroid that is immune even to her ice beam. One that would certainly kill her and almost does. Except for one thing. That Metroid is the baby. Once it recognized who she was, it detached immediately. The baby wouldn't just spare Samus though, it would also save her shortly after. 
when Samus would go up against Mother Brain for the second time, it turns out Ridley wasn't the only one they cybernetically enhanced. Not only is Mother Brain able to walk with limbs now, but it has an attack that would bring Samus to her knees, a not so creatively named Laser Brain attack. When Samus is helpless, the baby swoops in and drains Mother's life before it could use the attack for the final time. It then proceeds to transfer its energy to Samus, restoring her back to full health. Unfortunately, Mother also recovers and attacks it during this process, eventually killing the baby. Yes, the baby cared for Samus so much, it sacrificed its life for her. It also prevented Mother from being able to use the laser brain attack again. Guess you could use something similar now though. Doesn't feel so great, does it? Either way, it ends pretty much like the first game, but with one very important key difference. The self-destruct sequence caused the entire planet to explode. Therefore, at this point, Ridley, the space pirates, and Metroids were all officially eliminated. If they ever did come back, it would truly be unnatural. Anyway, with that, we've talked about everything we needed to about Super Metroid. See you guys next mission.